In this week's Technique Tuesday video, we're going to do some hat improvisation. I'll show you how to take a skein of yarn, any yarn weight, and knit it into a hat of any size. As always, if you'd like to jump right to a specific point in the video, there are direct links down in the description. What I have here are two different hats knit in different sizes using different thicknesses or yarn weights. In addition, I've used different types of ribbing. This one has knit one purl one ribbing and this one has knit two purl one ribbing. The hats are different circumferences and they're different lengths because this one was knit for an adult and this one was knit for a small child. So what I'm going to do today is show you how to go through the process of knitting a hat using any yarn weight in order for it to fit a specific person. So it could be a child, it could be an adult. Um, so going through all of the steps of how to knit a hat without using a pattern. The first thing you need to do is measure the recipient's head. There's, there are two measurements that need to be taken. And if the recipient is not available, I do have a chart down below in the description that can help with average sizes for different ages um, and sizes of people, but that's no guarantee that, that that's going to be the same as the person that you're knitting for. You're going to measure around the head above the ear. So you don't wanna include the ears, but you wanna measure around the head. That's one measurement. And then the other, other measurement that you want to take is over the top of the head from the base of one ear lobe to the base of the other. You want that full length over the top of the head and then you're going to divide that in two. That's going to give you the total length that you want for your hat. The next thing you're going to do is select your yarn. You can select a thin yarn or a thick yarn. It really doesn't matter. Um, but Every type of yarn is going to require a different needle. So a thinner yarn is going to need a smaller needle and will produce smaller stitches. And you will need, therefore, more stitches to create a hat than if you were to use a very thick yarn, um, which would require larger needles. So you want to look at your yarn label to see what it says about the recommended gauge. And so we are looking to get the recommended gauge or we want to get something that's firmer, which would be more stitches. We really don't want to go looser. We don't want bigger stitches. We don't want fewer stitches over four inches or over one inch um, because a hat needs to be snug to fit. And if you create a drapey or loose fabric, it's going to stretch out and not fit well at all. So this is a label from a company in the UK and in Europe, yarn labels are going to have a square like this, which represents four inches square or 10 centimeters square. And it tells you how many stitches they recommend over four inches. So this says 18 stitches over four inches or 10 centimeters, which is four and a half stitches per inch. Then it tells you the recommended needle size. It says in order to get 18 stitches over four inches, the average knitter will need a five millimeter needle, um, which in the US is a size eight. What is important here is the gauge, not the needle size. So if you know that you are typically an on gauge knitter, you can do a gauge swatch using this needle size. But if you know that you tend to be loose or tend to be tight, you can use a needle that you think is going to get you that target amount. Yarns produced for the North American market typically don't have that little square. Instead, they will have a little bit less information. This particular yarn label says it'll take a US 8 to get five stitches per inch. And if you'll notice, that's the same needle that was recommended for this other yarn. So again, this is a recommended needle to get a recommended gauge. The gauge is what we're trying to get. Because you'll be knitting in the round, your gauge swatch should either be knit in the round or it should fake knitting in the round. So when you're knitting in the round, the, the right side of the work, the public side, the knit side um, is always facing you so that you are always knitting in the round um, 
with this side facing you, you're knitting, 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 knitting. You're never turning to the other side in order to, to purl rows because you're knitting rounds. Therefore, when you do your gauge swatch, you need to have, you need to set it up so that you are always knitting stitches, that the knit side is always facing you. So you can do that using this fake in the round swatch. And I will link to a video right uh, above that explains exactly how to do this. So you need to do your gauge swatch and find out your, your stitches per inch. And it's probably going to be a fraction. It may not be, but it, it may be a fraction and you do not want to round off that fraction. Hats need to be knit to a smaller circumference than the head that will be wearing it. So what we want is a hat that has to stretch a little bit in order to fit. Because if you knit something that's exactly the same size as the head that will be wearing it, or, or worse, if you knit it so that it's larger, it's just going to slide down over the person's eyes. So typically you want a hat that is five to 15% smaller in circumference than the head that will be wearing it. My head measurement is 22 inches and I want to knit a hat that has 10% negative ease. So that means it's 10% smaller than this 22 in my 22 inch head. So in order to figure out how big that hat is going to be, I multiply 22 inches by 0.9 because this is going to give me 90% of this original measurement. And that result is 19.8. Now I look at what my stitch gauge was when I did my gauge swatch and I got five stitches per inch. I need a hat that's 19.8 inches in circumference and every inch is going to have five stitches in it. So I'm going to multiply my hat circumference that I want by five stitches per inch. And that number is 99 stitches. If I cast on 99 stitches, I will have a hat that's exactly 19.8 inches in circumference, but 99 uh, stitches may not be may not work well for the ribbing I want. So at this is the point where you think about what kind of ribbing do I want for my hat? Do I want knit one, purl one ribbing? If I, if I want that, then I would need an even number of stitches. So I'd need 98 stitches or 100. If I want to do a ribbing like knit two, purl one, that's a three stitch multiple. So I could do a knit two pro one ribbing with 99 stitches. But in my case, I really want to use knit two pro two ribbing. So knit two pro two is a four stitch multiple. So I need a multiple of four stitches in order um, to knit my hat. And so the closest multiple of four to 99 is 100. So I'm going to cast on 100 stitches. So a hat really has three components to it. It has the ribbing at the bottom of the hat when you first cast on. That prevents the edges from rolling in it and it, allow, it pulls in a little bit to hold snugly around the head, but it will certainly stretch as wide as it needs to as well. Then the next section is just the stockinette portion of, of the hat body. And that is worked um, for a good portion of a hat. And then at the top is where we have our decreases so that we gradually reduce the size of the hat till we have just a few stitches left that we fasten off at the top. So I measured my head earlobe to earlobe and my, my earlobe to earlobe measurement was 16 inches. That means I need my hat to be eight inches long. Now you can, adjust these proportions a little bit, but it's pretty typical for a hat to be about 25% ribbing, and then it will be about 45 to 50% of the hat body. And then you have about uh, 25 uh, to 30% for the crown decreases. These are approximate, so you can adjust those a little bit, but it gives you a way to start. 
so we can decide how long do we want our ribbing. So I'm going to go ahead with the 25%. I'm going to say I want this part to be two inches long. And at this point, we're going to tentatively plan for the hat body and the crown. Um, because once we, we determine uh, how we're going to work our crown decreases, we might want to adjust the length of these a little bit. But we're going to plan for right now um, that we're going to work the uh, body for four inches and then the crown for two inches. So that's just our tentative plan. At this point, we can also plan for some adjustments. So some people don't want their hat to go earlobe to earlobe. They might want a more slouchy uh, hat. They want, might want more length to it. So you could decide, well, maybe I want my hat body to actually be six inches. You keep these other two measurements the same and you're just adding length because you want the hat body to be longer. So you're gonna keep, keep these uh, two uh, parts the same. Another adjustment that you might want to make is that you want the ribbing to be long enough to fold over and be doubled. So in that case, you're going to knit um, twice as much as however you wide you want this ribbing to uh, be. And you're going to, to, to knit uh, four inches plus a few extra rows because when you fold that ribbing over, that thickness is going to take a couple of rows. So you can make these adjustments in your planning. Um, so at this point, what I want is I want a knit two, purl two ribbing. I want a hundred stitches and I want to have a doubled hat brim. So I'm going to work it for uh, four inches plus a little bit extra. Now is the point where we decide based on what we want to have happen with our ribbing, uh, like I want a knit two purl two ribbing and I want to be able to have the ribbing flip back, I want to choose a cast on method that is reversible so that when I flip it over that the appearance of the cast on edge is what I want. The cast on I use for this particular hat, which I did not intend to flip back, is a regular long tail cast on. And you can see this smooth side of the cast on facing. Um, but on this side of the cast on edge, at the base of every knit stitch, I see that little pearl bump. So if I was planning on knitting an extra long ribbing that I wanted to flip back, I don't like that pearl bump. Some people do, so this is an aesthetic choice. But, but I would want to choose a cast on edge that looks different. This particular hat, which is a little hard to see because of the variegation in it, this is a knit one, purl one ribbing. And in this case, there isn't any real defined edge at the base. The stitches appear to go all the way down to the actual edge and then roll around to the other side. So this is an option that can be really good, not just for knit one, purl one ribbing, but also if you wanted to do a knit one, purl one ribbing that you wanted to flip back. So I am going to choose a, a variation of the long tail cast on um, that is reversible. And I have a video that uh, I will link to at the top and also down in the description that um, has a couple of different ways of working a reversible edge for a long tail cast on so that both um, faces of the fabric look the same. When I did my gauge swatch, I established the needle size that I was going to need for the body of the hat. When I cast on and knit my ribbing, I'm going to use a needle that's one or two sizes smaller than the needle that I will use for the body of the hat. So here I have my ribbing done. I used an alternating long tail cast on for my knit two purl two ribbing. It's a cast on method that works with any a ribbing combination, whether it's knit one, purl one, knit two, purl one, or knit two, purl two, any combination of knits and purls, the alternating long tail cast on will work. So I need needed a size six needle for that my hat body, so I chose a size four needle to work my ribbing. Um, and I want at least two inches um, when I uh, folded back material. I knit mine a little bit longer than that. Um, when you're flipping the ribbing back, it's okay to be even a little bit longer than you originally planned because you can always roll the ribbing up more, fold it back more. If you knit it uh, 
too short, if you don't quite knit it as long as, as you were planning, that means that when you fold it back in order to cover your ears, you may not get a, a complete amount of doubled fabric for the whole length. So it's better to go a little over what you had planned than a little bit under. So my ribbing is complete and now I'm going to switch to my larger needle in order to work the stockinette body. I'm going to stop. Uh, my plan is to work the stockinette body about four inches. So I'm going to stop when I get to about three and a half. And then I'm going to evaluate how I'm going to work the crown. And I will make adjustments to both the hat body and the crown length at that point. So when I was planning my hat with a, a basic hat length of eight inches, uh, I said that the crown or the ribbing was going to be about 25%, so I wanted a, a two inch ribbing. That the body was going to be about uh, 45 to 50%, and then the crown was going to be about 25 to 30%. So, what, when you're starting out, you can't always predict exactly uh, how long each of these two components are going to be. So, what you want to do is you want to stop when you hit that 30% uh, short of whatever this, this hat uh, length uh, was planned to be. So I know that I want my crown to be somewhere between two and two and a half inches in length, and I know that I have two and a half inches remaining. So what I wanna do is measure how many rounds there are on my actual hat, how many rounds it takes to, to get to two and a half inches. Um, and how many rounds it takes to get to two inches. So the, my measurement is that two inches is about 13 rounds and two and a half inches is 16 rounds. So I stopped two and a half inches short of my final length. I have 16 rounds and two and a half inches. That means my hat needs to be 16 rounds longer than it is right now. Now I need to figure out how many decreases I'm going to be able to work every decrease round for my hat. So I want to see if I can divide the number of stitches I have evenly by somewhere between 8 and 10. And if I can't divide evenly, then I will work a setup round where I decrease a few stitches until I can get to a stitch count that can divide evenly. I have 100 stitches on my needle. So I can divide 100 by 10. So I can do 10 decreases per decrease round um, perfectly with the number of stitches that I have. So what I'm going to do is divide my round up into those 10 equal segments. So I'm going to have 10 stitches in each of these uh, sets of stitches, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, that will mark each of my uh, decrease locations. So when, as I work my decrease rounds, every time I work a decrease round, each of these sets is going to be reduced by one stitch. And at the very end, I will have one stitch remaining in each of these, these sets. So I'm going to go from 10 stitches down to one stitch, and that will take nine decrease rounds to do that. So however many stitches you have in each of your sets, it will take one decrease round fewer than that to do your all your decrease rounds. So I've numbered this sheet from one to nine. These represent my nine decrease rounds, but I also measured that I have 16 rounds left to work in my hat. So we're going to alternate a decrease round with a plain round for about the first half of the crown. You could go a little less, it could go a little more than that. But for sure, we want the last few decrease rounds to not have any plain rounds after them. Because as you're working the hat, as you get near the end, you want the decreases to be uh, faster and faster um, and so that the hat closes flatter like that. If you continue to work those plain rounds, you're gonna end up with kind of a pointy crown and that's what you wanna avoid. So you don't want plain rounds after the last few. So I have nine rounds for sure that I need to work. Each of those is a decrease round. And then I can start adding in plain rounds to see how that works. So a plain round here, that will give me 10 altogether, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Well, I don't really want to work any plain rounds after here. So if I, um, this is going to give me 15 rounds, and but I need to work 16 more rounds. So I'm just going to work a plain round before. So, so I have two and a half inches left in my hat. 
I am going to work one more plain round and then I'm going to start working my decrease rounds alternating with a plain round until I have worked six decrease rounds and then I'll just work uh, the last three decrease rounds without plain rounds. Now, if your stitch count doesn't divide evenly right off the bat like mine did, maybe you have 102 stitches instead of 100. So you can work a setup round where you decrease a few stitches in order to get you down to a, a stitch count that will work evenly like this. So if I had 102 stitches, I could work a setup round um, where I decrease two stitches, that would start me out uh, right away with an, a, an extra uh, round that I've worked out of my 16, so I wouldn't need to work this plain round that came before. So you just look at how many rounds you have left altogether and how you're going to distribute the plain rounds, and you want to make sure that the plain rounds don't extend all the way to the end. When you place markers like this to divide up the round evenly, when you start working your decrease rounds, you work, you knit up into the point where you are two stitches before the marker. So I have uh, two stitches remaining and then at this point I can work a, a knit two together. I slip the marker and then again I work until I have two stitches remaining and then work the decrease. On subsequent decrease rounds, I'll do the same thing. I will, uh, after I've worked this decrease round, I'm going to work a play round, plain round, and then again, I will work until I have two stitches before the marker, and then I'll work my decrease um, together. So uh, until you have established your decreases, this is a nice way uh, to make sure that you're placing in them, them in the correct place. Once you've worked several decrease rounds, you don't really need your markers, you can use the uh, established decreases to guide you as to where to put the next set of decreases. So I have worked all of my decrease rounds and I'm left with the final stitch from each of my 10 st sets of stitches, which means I have 10 stitches remaining. So at this point I will do as I would do for any hat. I will uh, cut the yarn leaving a 6 to 8 inch yarn tail thread it on the needle, and then fasten off the stitches. So here we have it. We have three hats, one knit for an adult with super bulky yarn, another knit for an adult with worsted weight yarn, and an extra long cuff to fold back, and then a child's hat knit with worsted weight wool as well. Each of these has different ribbings and use different cast-on methods, and each of them was customized based on the gauge I got for the yarn I was using and the size hat I wanted to knit. If you're interested in the yarns I used for these hats or the calculations I used to knit them, you can find that information down in the video description. I've also included a link to an article I wrote for Interweave Knits Gifts 2019 on improvising a hat, which includes examples of two hats, each a different size, knit with a different yarn weight. The article is available to read on the Interweave blog. Over here is a playlist of videos you might find helpful for hat knitting, including a variety of cast on methods and techniques for working in the round. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week.